Welcome to the Delling Pod with me, James Delling Paul. And when I say I'm really excited about my very special guest this week, I know I always say this, but I'm not lying because I have been trying to get Laura Perrins since like the beginning of the of this Corona craziness, and for various reasons, probably because uh, Laura's a busy mum and stuff, we never got our act together. But Laura, it's so great to have you on 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 the on the show. Um, and I, I know that you've got six months at least of rage to, to vent. <laughs> Am I right? I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't think I'd have to ever speak to you again, but we have to do this now because it's a bore, but it's necessary. Now, it's not a bore to be with you, of course. But yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't not even I thought they'd be crazy enough to, um, to start this nonsense again. But here we are. Well, let's, let's just go, go, go to, back to basics. What is it about the situation now, in, in, in 10 words or less, um, which, what is it about, about the state we're in now, which drives you most insane? Just sum up the, the craziness. It, it's just unnecessary. It's cruel. And even if you were to have certain restrictions, of course, as a lawyer, you would always say they're completely disproportionate. You're, you know, we're talk, there's, there's talking about no, the lockdown. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Unnecessary, cruel, disproportionate. Mm. For instance, even if you were to have some restrictions, you don't need to close outdoor tennis courts, which is, of course, a personal issue for me because we all play tennis. So I can't play tennis with my eight-year-old in, in an outdoor court. That represents zero, zero threat, right? Zero threat to anybody. But they just do it because they can. It's just vindictive. To me, it's vindictive. People give them the benefit of the doubt. I think that's a mistake. I, I want to get onto that about the benefit of the doubt because I entirely agree with you. I mean, I think we're going to agree on a lot in this podcast, but let me tell you one of my pet gripes. Um, my, my mum, you know, who's, I don't know how old she is. She's, she's a sort of mum age. Clearly she's going to be vulnerable if she gets coronavirus for various reasons. I mean, yeah. she, had, she had breast cancer and stuff. So yeah, she's, she's probably got, you know, problems, but she, her life in her as she gets on is 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 playing golf every day it keeps her healthy it keeps her happy it gives her fresh air and stuff yeah. and yeah. some vindictive tosser i don't know who was in charge yeah. regulations but it was a nasty little little gestapo yeah. star like creep yeah. and he decided to and the reason, his life yeah say, you can't play golf why not i tell you why they've done it and i i really i mean we i assume we've got the this. it's because some pollster right or dominic cummings or whoever said oh but it'll look bad you, yes they represent zero threat but you can't let these middle class sports yes. play no 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 no. you can't do that that would look it, we're all in this together so you all have to be punished no matter how so ban the bowls ban the golf ban the tent yeah but it's just it's just one person in the middle of the field hitting the ball ban it no, no, no. Do, do they get enjoyment from that yes ban it but they've Thanks. even banned, okay, so, okay, so, so they, you golf can, might... You can fish, I'm told you can fish, because it's not a sport. Are you allowed to have to fish? Because I've heard yeah, stories... I'm told you can do anything, I, uh, yeah, because it's not my, a sport. My son has so got like, evidence, bomb. my son's got evidence that somebody, he's at a, a university in the north, and, and he discovered somebody who wanted to go out on their fishing boat... Uh, you know their, their hobby right. fishing boat not their not their uh, professional fishing boat and they weren't yeah. allowed to do so by the, the the port authorities or whoever it is that controls the i mean this is the extraordinary thing one of the yeah. i think the most shocking thing for me laura this year has been just how little freedom we actually have and how how easily the state can take away what few freedoms we imagine we have as, as a lawyer did you know this all along or, or are you shocked by this no i mean i i am shocked I, I i'm shocked also by how much people have gone along with it i mean that's yeah. obviously been disappointing i mean i get that they're subjected to a massive propaganda campaign you know you and i know that probably avoid the mainstream media but we yes. have to observe it but we don't consume it but if yes. your average joe yeah. Um, who likes to stay informed and turns on your six o'clock news and your 10 o'clock news, you know, you will be scared witless because it has been an unending stream of, 
of propaganda that, you know, there are people out there that are 40 and in perfectly good health that think they're going to drop dead tomorrow if they go to the shops. Yeah. And, you know, and, if, and that itself is wicked. I mean, it's wicked. Here's the terrible thing, though, Laura. There are, there are just enough people dying out there of, of yeah. coronavirus or with coronavirus to provide the anecdotes that these people need to confirm the bias that's been instilled in them by the BBC. I mean, like yeah, you. Yeah, or else they, they, they tested positive and then 28 days later died of something else. There's always, a, there's always a story that somebody can say, yeah, but, but you know, they're right, you know, yeah. because, because did you hear about Joe? Joe was... Joe used to exercise mm. every day. He was really fit as yeah. a fiddle, blah, blah, blah. But um, like you, I don't consume the mainstream media. I mean, even the conservative newspapers. Okay, so the mail, remarkably, has turned around. The mail has turned. The mail's yeah. turned. And, yeah. and the mail's a very powerful institution. I mean, I, I, I wonder sure. whether, I wonder whether the whether the hysteria would have been anywhere nearly so great if the Daily Mail hadn't hadn't stirred they, it up they, in the early they were a months. Big, yeah, big part of the problem in the early months. I, I don't know why they've turned. Obviously, I'm glad they've turned. I mean, uh, again, I wouldn't necessarily assume it's for good reasons. It may well be just blatantly financial reasons. We've no idea. I don't know enough in the background as to why they've turned. But they certainly shouldn't have started it. And they, got, a, they were as hysterical as the rest of them. They were outrageous at the beginning. Outrageous. I've, I've got a, a, a vague insight to this, uh, into this. I, I'm not going to name names, but mm. I was talking to somebody uh, at quite a senior level in the mail the other day, and I he he was a, a skeptic. You know, he he he, does, he thinks that this is all massive overreaction, and I said, if you were editing the mail, um. And he's getting, this chap's got really broad experience in this area. Um, if you were editing the mail, would you allow your, your sceptical views to colour the, the news pages? And he said, no, you've got to go where the readership are. You can't, you can't go yeah. against them massively. And the reason that the mail supported the hysteria, the, the government line to begin with, well, for a long time, six months, is that yeah. that's where the readers were. So the readers had been sort of frightened yeah. by the... So it's a sort of vicious, vicious circle, isn't it? It's a... Or a, you know, yeah, well, it's a, a death spiral. Self-supporting, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's, it's terrible. The Telegraph have been, have been pretty poor. I mean, they're, they're not as bad, but... Pretty I poor mean, for the Telegraph. Of, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're a global of, health editor. The, yeah, I mean, I, I can't even, I mean, as I said, Alison Pearson, who I know has been very good recently, but I do remember at the beginning she supported it. And I remember when she was like, oh, it'll be, I'm tweeting specifically, you know, a sort of sarcastic tweet back to her saying, um, when she said, oh, it'll be over soon. And I was like, yeah, they, they said it would all be over by Christmas. Yeah. That was back in April. Yeah. And she, you know, uh, unfortunately, I've been proved right on that. So a lot of people shouldn't have gone around with the first one, but I mean, it's good that uh, obviously people who have turned have turned. Every every convert to a win. Um, but also, I don't understand where I know the polls all say they're for the lockdown, but anybody I speak to, literally anybody, yes. says it's ridiculous. Yeah. So I think a lot of the polling is, you know, they put so much pressure on them, and people tell polls with all sorts of stuff. Yeah. You know, oh yeah, yeah, I'm for the lockdown, but like. You know, because otherwise I, I, I'm, I'm painted as some kind of granny killer. So, um, you know, it's, it is really a sad state of affairs because before it all happened, I, I, I remember thinking to myself, well, I mean, Italy might go fascist and France might go fascist because, you know, they have form. Yes, yeah. Uh, but to see your adopted country do it, it was, it was yeah, it was sad. It was yes. tough to see. I mean, we'd expect your non-adopted country to do it, your, your country of birth. I mean, Ireland oh, it, is just over, isn't it? True believers. True, true, true believers. I, I, can't, I can't tell you. It's, it's not easy. But uh, they are also geographically, it's quite different. It's much smaller. There are a lot of grannies around. So again, you could maybe justify some restrictions. But I mean, they're, they're so invested. It's difficult to, it it's is. Difficult to explain. It is. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's you, you you were right. You mentioned about how Italy might go fascist because it has form and yeah, and, and, and so on. But our country, this country, 
the United yeah. Kingdom. We we've got a we've got a, a record of not going for extremism. We had a we had a civil war and and we sort of mm. resolved things, didn't we, over the centuries thereafter? And we're supposed to be the beacon, the global beacon of parliamentary democracy. And although we haven't got a written constitution, we've got all these these sort of inbuilt checks and balances and, and English common law, which is again supposed to be the envy of the world. And it seems to me that none of this stuff has worked. Here we are in, what month are we now? We're in November 2020, and we are effectively living in the kind of country that we used to, in, in the 1980s and 70s, I remember growing up, looking across the countries of the Iron Curtain, yeah. thinking about the people trapped in their own countries, not allowed to, to leave but, by the government. And now this is where we are. We are a totalitarian state. How did that happen? It's even worse than that because they're not even, I don't think they were, were they trapped in their own homes though? No, they I mean, were, the no. Level that's, of, that's the point. It's worse. Micro it's control. Worse. It's worse here. The micro yeah. control that's going on is, is worse here that, and, and it's that, you know, the anxiety and constantly checking, am I allowed to do this? Okay. Uh, uh, is my friend allowed to go over? Can we go to the garden? Can we not? It's, it's, me it's, it's crazy. But as I wrote as uh, in, in my recent speech, I think the anxiety it is, that's the point. The point is to make everybody, you know, an obsessive compulsive cleaner, um, uh, suspicious of all your neighbors. Um, you know, as I said, just constantly anxious, unable to plan anything. Can I, can I go and see my mother at Christmas? Um, can you see your friend down the road? Constantly on edge all the time. Um, you know, in terms of what do they intend, and I, I don't give anybody the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they're not as bad as I think, but I always start off with a very low opinion of human nature, and then prove to me, prove to me you're better than than you know my baseline, which is most people aren't that great, you know, including me. That's the that's because I was at the criminal bar. That's because also, um, you know, Christianity says you're pretty average. Prove to me you're better, right? Yeah. So. I think Boris Johnson, he's either being manipulated or he's a puppet. I think Matt Clown Hancock is loving it. And I think the gruesome twosome are loving it as well. The, what, Valence coming, and Witty. Oh, Valence and Val oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and, oh, and Cum Cummings is, I mean, I don't, I mean, Cummings, there's all sorts of stuff going on there. I, I don't want to be, you know, I, I, you wonder. And I, I, I also think... I, you know, for me, I'm not a, a class community, but I feel like they've gone for the culture first. So they've gone for, if, so I, I watch a lot of um, classical music concerts on YouTube. There's yeah. loads of people have recorded, of course, BC, before Corona. And, you, you know, we're so far from getting that back because, you know, violin one and two are, are right next to each other. And I know they're supposedly doing, you know, so you can't socially distance an orchestra. Mm -hmm. It must it must compromise the, the sound, right? You can't socially distance Swan Lake. This is, never mind, never mind the audience. This, this, we are so far from getting that back. It's, it's, it, as I said, it's actually upsetting. And I feel they've gone for the culture first. They've gone for all, all religions first to really kind of crush your spirit. Now they're coming for sports. You know, as I said, you can't play golf. You can't really do anything. So they're, they're going for, in a way, things people think they can live without in the short term. But in the long term, we can't. In the, it's, what, it's what makes us human, right? That's yeah. what makes us human. That, that, that's, animals don't go and watch other animals do beautiful dancing or play Beethoven's Fifth. You know, only, only humans do that. These, 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 this art is, the, this is brilliant on on an incredible scale, what these musicians do, what these dancers do. I bet the, the gruesome twosome, they don't care about the culture. They probably can't play any sport. They were the ner they were probably the nerds that were ne picked last at the sports team in school. Just guessing. You know what? You know right? I was at school. Coming. Well, and was he, how was his forehand? He was just kind of complete nobody. He was absolutely, nobody knew anything about Witty. He was just a kind of some, rat, one of those random boys. He wasn't good at sport. Well, fine, neither was I. He wasn't good academically. He was a nothing. He was an absolute nothing. And now this guy is in charge of your life and my life. And by the way, Valance, Toby Young told me this the other day, Valance is really, really hard left. 
He's a, he's a Corbynista. Shocking. So, so Yeah, 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 I know. This, but what about people like, I read a piece the other day about, about my, the, the people I'd expected to save us have not done so. In fact, they've been often the part of the problem. So two of the, yeah. two of the examples I gave were Michael Gove, who I, I, I he's a friend of mine. and I, I, to, I never liked him. Never okay, liked fair him. enough, fair enough. And, and, and maybe you've got better judgment than me. Start like, low, start low. <laughs> I like him on a personal level, but I have to say, um, I always thought that if there were ever a great historical um, uh, inflection point, like we're experiencing now, yeah. where you go from freedom to fascism in the space of six yeah. months, I thought that, so quick. I thought Gove would be in the foxhole next to me, fighting for this. You know, oh, I'll tell you who else has been disappointing. Jake, I, 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 I almost want to oh, swear. You're a, you're a Catholic girl, so I won't swear, but so Jacob bad. effing, effing Reese yeah. Mogg, who is a Catholic. He should get this stuff. Where has he been? Tell me. Look, I'm telling you, it, it, again, the, the, the thing about these people is the fact that they're even in politics. I'm sorry, yeah. James. Yeah. Apart from a few people, you've already self... They already have something within them that just means they're very rarely... They're just... Uh, it doesn't sit human. well, right? Yeah, can't, yeah, basically. I mean, I, I, something about Theresa May, I always think that she, she has a big sense of duty. I wouldn't put her in that category necessarily. But most people, especially if you're really climbing to the top, yeah. by definition, you've yeah. done nasty things. By definition, you have compromised on lots of values. Yeah. You know? So do I expect them to be able to stand up in the middle of this and, and, and lose all of the privileges and the massive egomania, the power that these people have, no, no. That's, it, 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 they that's just, people true. People don't do that. And uh, might I add, James, where, where are the feminists? The gruesome twosome, Dominic Cummings, Boris Johnson, Matt Hancock. Yeah. Uh, uh, feminist people, I mean, you have a big problem staying at home. They are literally telling you to stay at home. Yeah. That's the actual order. I don't care. I mean, I like staying at home. But, I mean, they're <laughs> yes. shockingly quiet. You can't find them anywhere. Yeah. I mean, they're just, you know, where's the feminist when you need us? It's, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. It's true. Do you know, I'll tell you the weird thing, um, Laura, that I've noticed. I've been to a few rallies. And the yeah. only people who've been really committed uh, in fighting back this are the kind of the David Icke tin four hat brigade, the people that, that, that you and I would would kind of want to distance ourselves from because of you know his yeah. very various conspiracy theories. But my goodness, they've got the energy uh, and, and the the commitment. You know, look at look at look at Piers Corbyn. I mean, some of the things Piers says are crazy, particularly on on things like like Palestine and stuff. But at the same time. Yeah. He's the guy yeah, getting but, himself arrested. Now, what? So, so what is this about? But they're not. They're not part of the establishment. So it's all. You know, that's the yeah, thing. Where is Jacob, Jacob, what would Jacob rees mogg have to do to, to to give up to do that? He's speaker of the house, right? Yeah, he's made it. Right? So he's think of the amount of perks, the privilege, everything that he would have to sacrifice to say, "I'm resigning over this." This is wrong. I'm, I'm not. I'm not doing it anymore. Same uh, with, uh, wait, with that foreign wait, secretary. Wait. Uh, go on. The speaker of the house is a bauble. I mean, okay, it's nice. It, it's it's. Uh, they love baubles. That's the. Sorry, point. sorry, sorry. Lead, 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 leader of the house. I meant. Um, he's not speaker. But but I, what I said in in that particular piece that I wrote, um, for my for my Patreon oh. and subscribe star, was that. The yeah. point about the whole point about Jacob Rees Mogg, the reason that, that classical liberals, straight, whatever, like myself, sort of revered him yeah. and thought he was not damaged goods, was because of his enormous private income, because of his yeah. his, um, his his uh, investment company, which you would have thought, and and, yeah. and of course his wife is worth a, worth gazillions as well. You would have thought that, and plus his Catholic faith, his you know he's he's yeah. confidently old fashioned, would render him immune to the blandishments yes. of this corrupt establishment. He, he, he's mm -hmm. his own man. I and mean, he's an argument for every MP having hinterland, every MP having to, having to have sure, it, sure, do a sure. proper job before. And yet he, he's completely blown that theory. 
Well, I know, but he was always part of the establishment and he wants to stay. He wants to stay part of the establishment. It's not, you know, yes, the, having the money obviously gives you a certain amount of, of protection, but it, it, he, he doesn't want to be outside. He's, mm. he's always been on side and he'll, he'll, I mean, the other, of course, depressing thing is that he might just really believe it, which is probably an even worse conclusion. But I think, mean, I find it. Do you think any of them believe right, it? I mean, they, 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 well, they I do think you can be convinced of your own brief. I mean, how, how wrong? It's hard to say. It's hard to say. I mean, they can't. Do they really believe this 4,000 deaths? As I said, even if they do believe some of it, and they're going back to the first point, it's not proportionate what they're doing now, right? They don't have to be as hardcore as no, they are. They and they're being as hardcore for political reasons, for optics, because Dominic Cummings hates hates the shires I, I i don't know i i, I you know yeah. who can figure them out the, the bigger problem is also is why as i said why are people going along with it so much so then we can start our face mask rant why are people wearing face masks yeah people now wear them outside that shows how deep the problem is right is that you can take your face mask off outside and some of them either can't be bothered or literally think they're going to fall down dead if they do a yeah. face mask that they probably haven't washed in about maybe two weeks. Um, a face mask that they touch all the time. A face mask that they like to wear on their chin a lot. A face mask that goes there. I just, I, I, I've been in my local town centre about five times the last two weeks because, you know, you like to top up. And I take a good look around. I'm just like, what, why? What is, why are you wearing this? And it's all self-enforcement because I never wear it. And in fairness, no one has said anything to me once. I know you had a bad experience on a train, but no one has said anything to me. Um, and, and then the other thing is, James, is I see mothers, as you can imagine, with babies, young babies in prams, and the, obviously the baby's looking up at them and they're wearing a face mask. And I just, it's difficult to stay calm. Do you know how important it is for babies to see their, their mother's face and they're Sorry. smiling? Where, where are all the child development people? They didn't even ask for an exemption for this. I know they've exempted, like, you know, newborn babies from the plus two rule or whatever it is. Woohoo! Um, I, I thought but they, they, were, they weren't even actually... recommended for children. No, they, they, they are. So, so, are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they, they are doing something for un, uh, pre, preschool children. So basically, mom and a preschooler can meet up with mom and preschooler in a park. Right. Right. Whereas, uh, strictly, I can meet you in a park. But the exemption would be, yes, we can bring our two preschoolers. Whereas, you know, a couple of days ago, it, we couldn't have. And all this nonsense. The fact that we're even taught, it's just not, you know, it's like, let's check the rules. Can I bring Sammy to the, to the park and meet, you know, Mary and her son? And, oh, we better bring the face mask, but we can't get a coffee because, you know, that will kill everybody. And, I mean, it's just, it's just, uh, what, what's there to say? It's, it's unbelievable. It's uh, unbelievable. Aren't I, aren't I right in thinking that the difference between the English legal system and the Roman legal system is that in English common law, you're allowed to do what you're like unless you, it's expressly forbidden. Yeah. Whereas yeah. in Roman yeah. law, it's the other way around. You do things with permission. And now they, they flipped it. They, they flipped it. This, we are now living under, yeah. under Roman law. And, and the government and you, can decide whether or not yeah. you have Christmas or not, which, is, which, we, which hasn't been in its power since the Commonwealth. And, and if you listen to what they say, if this is ex they're exactly the words they use. Um, we'll see if we can allow you, how many we can allow you meet up with people in, in, at Christmas. We'll see what we can permit. It's all what we can allow you to do. Yeah. You know, as I said, and people are sitting on their couches every night watching this stuff. I'm like, what, what is, you know, what is wrong with you? Yeah. Why aren't you complaining about this? It's just in, like they're telling, oh, oh, what's essential? Oh, they're going to tell you what's essential. So in Wales, buying a jumper for your kid from the supermarket in the middle of November, that's not essential. You've got to cover that aisle up. We'll tell you what's essential. We'll tell you what's essential. We'll, we'll tell you what's essential to buy. Well, well, if I want to buy it, then it's essential, right? Yeah. This isn't, we're, then they'll be telling you what, all that's essential is bread and water. Didn't you, don't, that's all you need to keep alive. So yeah. there's your daily allocation of bread and water and please go home now to your, hovel or whatever oh, by the way it's not your home anymore you had to sell it to us 
Um, you couldn't pay the massive tax we're putting on it. So uh, actually, by default, we own all your. Oh, funny you mentioned. I mean, that. it could go anywhere. Laura, it could go anywhere. You know, listen, you've put your finger on something of great concern to me. Because of course, we're, we're just at the beginning of, of, of this, this problem, not, <laughs> not, not the end. That how are they gonna pay for this, for the furlough? Uh, for for, for the, gov the government, i.e. the taxpayer, paying loads of people who want to work, not to work, it's and extending this period for, for far longer. How, okay, so it costs two billion pounds a day, doesn't it, every, every, every day of lockdown? Two billion pounds, that's 2,000 yeah. million pounds. Numbers. We can't really even comprehend, right? Yeah. I mean, let's say we can nobody can comprehend the money involved, the numbers involved. So they are going to start resorting to fairly quickly, I think, to confiscation, probably private property. So, so there we really are living under, you know, you don't have property rights anymore. That one of the most fundamental bases yeah. for a civil society. Uh, yeah. No, I don't. I, I just. I mean, the, the thing is, where is the opposition going to come from? Because so far. All of the companies, oh, you talk about the Royal Ballet, all of these have all gone with it because, of course, they had to, because that was the press. If, they, if, if anybody said, actually, you know, well, I'm not going to go along with this, you're the granny killer, right? This is, this is the problem. Yeah. But when are you need, but you, first of all, I mean, so the Catholic Church has come out against, I mean, it's linked to your private property, but your Catholic Church has come out against uh, the banning of saying public mass. You know, uh, uh, when, they need to start saying now, this is an attack on property rights. This is an attack on people's fundamental right to work because working is 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 a matter of human dignity under Catholic social uh, teaching. You know, it's interfering with people being able to raise children. Oh, let me get into self isolation in a minute. You know, so we need the churches to come out against it. We need people like the Royal Ballet to say, right, you know what, we've we've paid our dues now. You know, we need to, culture is really important. We, we need to, when are we getting back? And I'm not talking the face mask and all this ridiculous social distancing. You, where is the opposition going to come from? It's not, me and you, I'm afraid, is not enough. You know, no. you need the big, the big I have companies. To say, just briefly, um, Laura, for those, those, of you, yeah. those who don't know who you are, because I'm, I'm really rubbish at my introductions. You're the, you're the co-editor of a, a really splendid <laughs> website called Splend Conservative yeah. Woman. And it's yeah. interesting, you are about the only bloody con genuinely conservative website in, in the country. I mean, okay, th there's, a, there's a few sort of branding themselves as vaguely conservative, like what, unheard and whatever. But I think, yeah. Even Conservative Home, the, 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 the house website of the conservative movement, yeah. has been pretty feeble, I think. Your Conservative Woman has been the only strong voice of opposition. Why is that? Why have, mm. why have, conservatives, well, why have conservatives so failed to resist? Well, I mean, obviously, again, Conservative Home is part of the establishment, so it's yeah. going to be difficult for them to, 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 to go against it. I mean... Just people are, I think, afraid of being, of being shamed. You know, I think that emotional blackmail that you must do this or you will hurt others was incredibly effective because they have all their mind dudes in there in, the, in 10 do. downing, as well as proven to them. They have the behavioral scientists, right? And they have their polling people. And unfortunately, I think people are easy, easy to manipulate. And, and going back to the per furlough and private, um, uh, private property rights, you know, it's, uh, the, I call this the, what, the pacification scheme. So the Americans did this to the Vietnamese during the Vietnam War. You know, so if you, you shame people and then you buy them off, you know, with compensation. So I, I, that's, the, that's your population pacification scheme, the, the furlough. But I mean, it, it can't go on. And, and it, who knows what they could do with taxes. But unless big big institutions start standing up and saying this is an attack fundamentally on human dignity and our basic liberties um people are are going to go along because i guess they've given us just enough comfort right and just enough freedom for people to go along with it for for a while but it's a drip drip you know the face masks the inability to work um because people want to actually work right and this is the difference between the socialists for socialism it's fine right they just throw throw money at the problem but for most people to have a sense of dignity they actually want to do the job yeah okay this is this is a really important part of who they are to prove themselves at whatever it might be 
or provide for their families. Even if they don't like the day-to-day -day job, they're providing for their families, etc. Yeah. So the fact that the, a conservative government is crushing that uh, and, and just, well, you know, we, we're paying them. They were paying them to sit at, uh, sit at home and watch, net, watch Netflix. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You're just constantly do what I would call degrading the populace all the time. And don't talk to me about how badly I think this is going to go for 20-something-year-old men many of whom are, are, are still living at home, right? Now they have to nearly stay at home all day. They can't work. It's so emasculating. It's they so can't emasculating. go and find mates. They can't, crushing the young men, of course. If there was going to be any real pushback, it, it's going to come from, from you know, young 20-something, 30-year-old men. But they have been so emasculated from feminism and, and lots of other things yeah. over the last decade yeah. or so. And this, this is only going to make ten, things 10 times worse. Yes. Um, oh yeah. So, well, I'm I'm, I'm listening to the radio in the car because I don't listen to it at home, and it's a phone in, and a guy comes in, calls in, and he's in. I know he's in his twenties and he's still living at home with his mom. That's problem number one. Yeah. And this was before this lockdown, and he was going to be due to go back to work, but because he was facing customers and had asthma, his words, he was terrified to go into work. Terrified. This is from a 20-something-year-old man who has asthma because he's been told, again, he's going to drop dead from the, from, you know, yes. the back tape. You see, back in the and day... And there'll be what, thousands of these people when you and, at you home and I, sitting... when, when you and I were at school, we'd have called him a wet fart, we'd have given him wedges, and, and he'd have learned that you, you can't be a wet fart because you're not really a, a valuable member of the of of, of the of yeah. civilization yeah you know that attitude I mean, doesn't it, work and now of course <laughs> yeah we've, we've 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 bred a generation of wet farts well i mean i i, I that's true it's definitely been a lot of safetyism and we are now living in the tyranny of safetyism it, it's definitely been a long time coming i i could see it you know don't climb to the top of the climbing frame blah, it's all the time better to be safe than sorry yeah. i'm like is it <laughs> not all the time <laughs> You know, yeah. well, maybe it's better to take the trip to to wherever godforsaken hellhole you want to go to. Maybe you should take the trip. Maybe you should climb the mountain. It's not always better to be safe than sorry. Yeah. You know, but this is the thing. It's they're crushing courage. They're crushing. It's so, as I said, they're, 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 they've gone for the arts. They're, gone, they're going for human dignity in terms of work. They're crushing families. It's, um, it's, it's, it's nasty. You know, what they're doing is now people shouldn't be under any doubt. These aren't good people with the best intentions. Oh, I really didn't. I don't. I didn't want to have to do it to you. Yeah, with a heavy you heart. But you deserved it because you didn't abide by the rules. This is what wife beaters say, right? Yeah. You made me do it. You made me do it. You know, I, I don't know what, as I said, do not give them the benefit of the doubt. And I mean... If you really want me, I mean, I'm just thinking, I'm sorry, James, but perhaps we shouldn't take next time. Let's not put in the multiple adulterous, you know, couldn't keep a promise to anybody, narcissistic, abortion paying for lunatic in number 10. You know, because the guys are doing the right thing. It, they're not great. Don't Laura, do it. Laura, you're, you're so right there. I, in, in the past, because... He's a, he's quite a seductive character, you know. I've I've known very Boris. Uh, yeah. There's I, lots of women yeah. who can control that. I've I've known known Boris since since university, and I always gave him the benefit of the doubt, just because I sort of bought into that kind of cuddly sort of distra little boy lost game that he plays. And and I I, mm. I often made the case that it didn't matter about his immoral personal life what mattered yeah, we see, we was the opposite. What, what what mattered was 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 what he did it, you know what how he used his power but now i realize that his moral failings go to the heart of his political failings yeah is that fair yeah i mean it, it, well i think so i think so and we and again i'm sorry to say we never liked him we a conservative woman we never liked him the right. blogs are there I mean, I, obviously, I voted conservative for the last election because the choice was him or the, the terrorist sympathizer, yeah. right? So, I mean, again, you have to ask yourself the question, why? Why was that our choice? Um, but it was, it was it, I, although I'm not a member of the party, so I can say I never voted for him to be leader. Um, and I remember coming up to the election, obviously, you get, a, because of the name of the website, you get a lot of calls. Will you do this media? Will you do that media? And I just didn't do any of it. 
because I just said, you know, I just can't go out there and back for this man. I'm just not going to do it. I'm just going to, I'll vote for them, but I'm not going to do anything else. And so nothing, was it, uh, and the reason, was yeah, it philandering or what? What, 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 what put you off? Oh, I just never, I, know, I can see why, I'm sorry, I can see why the men like him because he's one of the lads. Right, I'm sure he's great down the pub. I'm sure he has you rolling in the aisles. But yeah, the philandering is bad. Um, or just all of this. Or, you know, and, and also he, his lack of professionalism. He, I do think he changed a little bit coming up. He was definitely, I will say, you know, he, he looks slightly more professional in a, in Yeah, he got a haircut. It. But he, you know, he was, you know, so people say, well, well, Trump. I mean, Trump was, Trump was the same. You're like, well, yeah, the elements of Trump were the same, sure. But, you know, he, Trump, how long did Trump campaign for? Both the, the election now and, and, and the last election, right? He was coast to coast. He was, he was putting in the hours. And I just never, I, I'm sorry, but Boris Johnson, he is, he's, that, he's, he's a product of the public schools here which I, I'm not hugely invested in. And it, it's similar to David Cameron. You know, I quite, li I quite like that job. I mean, well, you know. know actually, I quite, Nora, I, I, like I think you're, 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 you're right on a lot of things. I'd say that actually Boris Johnson, interestingly, isn't one of the lads. He's very much not. He's like a lot of... Oh, right. To be a, to be a philandering man, to be a successful... I mean, you know, Boris, uh, Boris wants... And he can't afford it, as opposed to Trump who no. can. Boris once confided to a friend that he had not ha needed to have a wank since he was 14 because he'd always had sex on tap. That's, a, that's, a, that's Boris for you. Now, to somebody, when you dedicate your life to having sex with as many women as possible, regardless of the consequences, it's kind of a full-time yeah. job. You can't hang around, you know, what lads do together is they, they get drunk, they, they exchange banter, they go hunting, shooting, fishing. That's the, these are proper pursuits for, for a man. Boris never did any yeah. of that. He's not, he's not actually very clubbable. He's, he's, he's agreeable when he's in the yeah, room. Yeah, but but actually what he yeah. wants to do is he wants to bugger off and be with, some, with, with his next floozy. So yeah. just, just, uh, just a point of, uh, of, uh, on the record. Well, I mean, he has, he, he, has no, well, he has no personal discipline. None. No. None. And that, that is an issue if you put him in number 10. I mean, it, it's a big issue. Um, so, I mean, that's all, uh, yeah, as I said, it's, it's, one, it's one thing to break up, a, you know, your first marriage and, and maybe, look, it really wasn't working out and you obviously, you, you, yeah. you, you sat in your second marriage, but the f philandering, yeah. I mean, you know, it, 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 it's, it, it's really bad. You think he might... I mean, Give it up when he was when he was leader of leader of the United the world's fifth yeah, biggest economy. A habit, you can't break a habit like that, right? No, that's the thing. I mean, how difficult? How it, it, this is a difficult habit to, to break. It's the same as if you really like alcohol. It's these yeah, are yeah. difficult habits to break. It's not it's not a, 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 in, an easy you know it's not an easy thing to do. I mean, and, and then you can get really psycho in terms of why was he doing it? Well, probably because he wasn't old enough when he was young so it all comes down to the yeah. to what happens when they're kids you I know think, to I feel need, to feel that void inside all the time it's it's i mean we know that is when he was you know i'm sorry but that kind of level of aristocracy it's the same as diana and charles it's just the bottomless pit of needs that they were never shambolic families dysfunctional families yeah you know? yeah they're not it's all bad. like that you know it's, it's no, I know. I don't mean all that, but those few examples, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's sad, it is sad in a way, but unfortunately, <laughs> it seems that it's kind of morphed into this nightmare that we're all having to, to, to live through. Yeah. Uh, I mean, thing is, but, but it, yeah. Okay. We've, 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 we've chewed up and digested and spat out. Poor Boris. Shout, poor shout Boris. out Boris. Well, it's not Boris. He totally deserved it. But look at the people yeah. around him. I mean, look at well, Cummings. Not, how how evil is Dominic? I I, I was. Uh, he, no, no. He's just evil. I, he is just. He, Laura, he is just evil. At the beginning of the year, <laughs> I, at the beginning of the year, I wrote two of the worst, the most culpably wrong pieces I've ever written. One of them was 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 uh, like we're talking about almost January the first, I think. One was in praise of J Boris Johnson because I thought that he was going to deliver Brexit and he he pulled off a blinder. He, yeah. He'd actually 
negotiated his way through that extraordinary impasse. I mean, let's let's not. But before we beat ourselves too much about having you know voted for this government which has gone fascist, let's not let's not forget that, like in when was it September last year, the country was in was in chaos. It was in. It was long yeah. wasn't it? Parliament was 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 yeah. hopeless. We weren't going to get Brexit. Um, anyway, uh, so Boris is a disaster. But the other one I I, I praised to the skies was was Dominic Cummings, who I thought was mm-hmm. I I brought into the line that because he effectively delivered uh, found a way of getting us to vote Brexit, you know, which is what he wanted to do anyway. Uh, but yeah. I also thought I'd, I'd read his stuff on civil service reform, and I thought, my God, yeah, Dom, you are so right. It needs it yeah. needs a, a hatchet man like you to go in there. But what I didn't realise, mm. or rather, what I I, I ignored, we, we we turn a blind blind eye to our heroes' faults, don't we? Until we realise that the the faults sure. are, are actually defining. Was yeah, he is a technocrat. He believes in a he lot of a stuff technocrat. that doesn't work, yeah. like DARPA, the the American kind of government so, sort of science and technology um, quango, which actually did did nothing to advance technology or science. It just just sucked up huge amounts of taxpayers' money. And Dominic Dominic Cummings thinks it was great, and he wants more of it. He's dangerous. Well, I. I, he's dangerous. He's a planner. He's a technocrat. Yes, he likes to think, you know, he's not part of that establishment. He's not part of the elite, but he would just set up another elite, right? He's not interested in, in, in like letting power drip down to the lowest level, no, right? Not. He doesn't. just doesn't like the current elite. So he wants to get rid of all of them and then set up his own nice planning elite that they're literally can plan with a computer, which is what they're doing yeah. with all the modeling and the predicting, which is just a fancy word for lies or yes. guessing. I, I'm just guessing. Um, and bamboozle everybody with, you know, medical techno language and we all, we all just, we all just go along with it, you know. So he is deaf. He, he's just. I mean, he, he's evil. Matt Hancock is just within any other walk of life, and in a normal society, would be a little man somewhere. He might be. I don't know. I don't know what he'd be doing. He might run a small business or something. Nothing wrong with that. Perfectly respectable. They're trying to kill all those small businesses now, and now he's just this jumped up power mad you know, uh, he, he's particularly irritating. He, he's the person you avoid at a party. I mean, you're walking the other way, um, away from him. And for amazing, amazingly, he's, he's said, literally planning our lives. It's, it's really, it's really shocking. But in terms of just, I know that you're living, you call yourself a libertarian, but this no, is the problem, Donna. I don't actually. I really you're don't. Sort of it. No, God, no, I'm not. I, I, can so, I just say officially, I am not a effing libertarian. I think libertarians okay. have failed us this year and failed us utterly. Yeah. All the people who call themselves libertarians, they've been crap. Yeah. yeah. The and I, I, but so a lot of, you know, when people say, and I say, well, why did you oppose the lockdown? It's very libertarian. I laugh. I'm like, do you know how unlibertarian I am? I mean, seriously, run, run, read the website. You know, if you're a conservative, you should want to conserve things. Yeah, yeah. That's your basic status quo. You know, they might be, there might be problems with them and you can, you can try and fix them slowly, right? But yeah. you want, should want to conserve things like traditions and culture and small businesses and your, your, the ability to be able to go out to a restaurant and eat and the economy and, you know, the royal ballet. These things that took generations to build up. And also traditional what, roles, men and women, you know, like boys doing... Oh, well, I mean, got, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, but we're, we're, we're so far from that. But um, the problem with Dominic Cummings always was, and it's always why I was always a little bit unsettled about Brexit, although I did support it, is, you know, you're, again, if you're a conservative, your status quo should be no, no revolution. You, can, you, you keep things as calm as and as structured as possible. And then you can look to change things. But you do not change things with a sledgehammer. Whereas Dominic Cummings was all about burn it down, tear it up, light a fire. Oh, actually, I think they gave one of those speeches, which is exactly the same as Barack Obama's speeches, wasn't it? that we were going to fundamentally change Britain from a conservative prime minister. If you, want to fund- if you wanted to fundamentally change your wife, you wouldn't really like your wife that much, would you? That's true. You'd be like, <laughs> I, I would like to fundamentally change my marriage. Mm, really? What, all of it? But not, not just maybe go well, out you, a bit you more? Can, you can pay, as Boris, Boris Johnson once joked, you can actually pay for her to have bigger breasts, I suppose. Um, 
But, but he wants more than yeah. that, doesn't he? I think he wants a, a brain transplant and a body transplant. So, so things like fundamentally change, radical change. If, if you hear any of these buzzwords, mm. you, you should have alarm bells should be ringing. And a lot of people, I know you, I think your last, per, or the doctor spoke about it, you know, because once you have revolution, right, people with agendas that are very different to ours latch onto them and say, this is our opportunity. And that's yes. what you're seeing now. You might not have planned it. You know, there's not somebody there in, 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 you know, they're not all coalesced to, to make, to trigger this. But revolutions mean fundamental change. Well, I quite like the way things there are. I don't want fundamental change, thanks very much. So well, that, take off your mask and go and have lunch somewhere without some bloody waiter serving you in a mask. Isn't that the most evil phrase of this year? That the idea that there is this new normal, which we're, we're oh, never going to get back normal. the old. They might as well say new world order, right? I mean, well, as is. I said, fundamental change. It, it's like, you know, they'll be coming out wearing Darth Vader suits soon, given these press conferences. I mean, they're not even hiding it now. Yeah. It's scary. And let, let me talk to you just what, about self-isolation, because I, again, along with mothers wearing face masks, this has gotten very little coverage. Mm -hmm. So you know how if you get your, your fo you know, if you happen to be in the vicinity of somebody five miles yes. away from you yeah. who's got COVID, right? you get your call from the Stasi or whoever it might be because you've given them their number or, I mean, who, who does track and trace? It's crazy people. But anyway, yeah. somehow they've got crazy people, <laughs> but somehow they've gotten your number and you get the call and you've to self-isolate for 14 days. Well, they do this to kids in school. Now, I don't know how you, but do you know what technically self-isolation would mean? If you're, your kids are at university, aren't they? Well, yeah, yeah. if you have it at the university, we can do them now in a minute. But, um, that this could mean that your teenager has to stay in their room for 14 days with pretty much only their food given to them outside the door. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I don't think anybody's doing this, right? I mean, no family is doing it. But again, I'm wondering as a Catholic, why isn't the church saying that this is a fundamental attack on family rights? So if you had a, a, an 11-year-old or a 10-year-old who's told to self-isolate, I don't know how, how low the cutoff age comes in this new, uh, new normal. Are we telling eight-year-olds you have to stay in your room for 14 days and not go out and exercise, not play Lego with your brothers and sisters, not eat at the family table, Yeah. right? That's what's wrapped up in this nice little word, self-isolate. Yeah. You know, uh, not read a book, with, not watch a family movie, not be read to at bedtime. This is, the kind, this is evil. Yeah. Don't be under any doubt about this. And I'm just wondering where all the people who are supposedly supposed to be defending human dignity, private family life, family relations are, because I'm not hearing much pushback yeah. from Cardinal Watson's face uh, and the rest of them. Well, no, I indeed, mean, this is wrong. no indeed from that, that the pillock who's um, in ch uh, charge of the Church of England. Um, what's his name? The old, uh, old uh, Italian. Yeah. Yeah. He is ex-oil man. So probably. I mean, well well be, yeah, just as well yeah. be. Yeah, yeah, I agree that the performance, awesome. the, it's actually almost made me want to find a, a proper religion, you know, like, I mean, if, if the Catholic Church was... That's, was that's, that's my one. Yeah, yeah, I know, but but, but your, religion, but your church you know. is but your church has been crap as well. You know, I was so disappointed, but I, I I found myself in a in a, a strange place the other day, and. As I often do, I went. I walked up to the church to, to look at the church and, and, and walk around the graveyard yeah. and, and to look inside. Except, of course, I couldn't go inside. I couldn't have that that moment of of, of solace inside a church that's yeah. traditionally been available to. I mean, I imagine that during the war, had you, uh, had you gone to any village in the country, you'd have been able to walk into the church and look at the look at the effigies and. Uh, Mm. you know the, the stained glass or whatever and, and appreciate that this part of your culture and now that's been taken away from us with the church's consent it's not doing its job yeah. no it's they're really not doing their job and they need to they need to man up but these things take courage and courage you, is a virtue that is severely lacking right now severely lacking i mean as i said it goes it, a lot of it is, is the emasculation of men um they need to they need to man up and i mean they're being banned from working i mean it's the same it's terrible for women as well it's it's you know it's just it, but the self-isolation thing 
you know, they bring these, these little diktats out and they get hardly any, any news, but yeah. they, should, they should get coverage. And it, as I said, this is the, what's going on is wicked. So, okay, so, so we've got the feminization of our, of our culture over for an, in a number of ways. For example, there are so few mm. male role models teaching these days, are they? It's almost to totally women who, who tend to mark, mark boys down for being boys. They tend, you know, just natural male behavior is suddenly sort of pathologized as yeah, something. Yeah. So there's that. Are there any other reasons why, okay, we've already established that the government, what do you call them, the head people, the, the, the weird, weird psyops people yeah. have been very, you know, the narcissist, what, they want to crush other people's fun. So, 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 so they've been very effective. But yeah, I'm, I'm still at a loss to explain how the country that allegedly, maybe it was just a propaganda myth, allegedly showed the bit, the bit spirit and, and kept going, you know, was not going to be defeated by Hitler. How come we've surrendered so easily to, to, to it, this? It was a very, it was, it must have been a very, it was a very different country back then. I mm. mean, how much contact would you have had with the States in the 1930s? I mean, you know, it just, it, it was just, a, it, it, it was, a, it was a very different country. People would say, the, it, it's it's very, but also if you, I mean, running up to it, I mean, people wanted appeasement, right? It's a mistake to think that, you know, so that darkest hour when Churchill, that, that Churchill goes down into the tube and when all the people black, are saying- black man on the tube, that, that changed it, I, that, I gather. That, I mean, I thought, it was a great, I thought it was a great film, but I mean, Churchill did stand alone, right? He was a minority, yeah. he, he was the minority voice in government. He was, he was, the, the public weren't with him at the beginning um, until they realized obviously it was serious. So it is always difficult to stand up and say, <clears throat> we're not, we're, we're, we're going to fight this. Um, we, you know, it, it, it's just our way of life is actually very, very important and we're not going to let it be crushed. Uh, these are always minority voices. The pushback always usually comes normally from a much smaller amount of people, and then eventually, the masses, the masses, go so this, along with it. This is us, Laura. We are that small group of people. Now, did Did you read the uh, or or see the video of Lord Sumption's incredible speech at Cambridge? I, I I didn't read it, but I I mean, obviously, he's yeah. I'm aware of his his protest. I was going to ask you. One of our checks and balances is the judiciary, and the judiciary yeah. have failed us. The judiciary have just been, they've refused the chance, Simon Dolan's uh, attempts to get a judicial review of government policy, mm -hmm. and the judges have just, in every case, have just gone and rolled over and said, yeah, well, the government's trying to save lives, so I don't think you really have a yeah. case. So what, it, what you need to do is you need to get a terrorist who's annoyed with these laws and think it breaches their fundamental human rights, <laughs> and then... Then go to the Supreme Court and, and it'll all be gone tomorrow because, you know, the terror. I mean, remember the fuss made over whole house arrest, basically house arrest or 28 days and, and even like a supervision of, no, of suspected terrorists. Do you remember the, the, yes. the men's court case over that? Yeah. 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 So if you're a threat, uh, you know, if you're a terrorist threat, you're, your rights are, you've got your rights. If you're ordinary Joe who wants to go out and work, not so much. So that's what, so you need, you need a terrorist to bring the case. It's it sounds like the script of a, of a kind of fantastic satirical movie. Uh, that the, the, they have to find a terrorist willing to. Yeah. In yeah. return for what? I because don't know. I'd I'd have to go over the case, but there was a, they have to change the legislation quite a lot because you know as, if you put a, a suspected terrorist under essentially house arrest and not surveillance the court said that was that was amounting to incarceration again I'd, I'd have to go over and check all the case law but there were plenty of cases over it and um but for some reason anything can be justified by obviously under safetyism it's anything safetyism yeah it's it is extraordinary that that surely when when did any government or any you know a king or whatever any administration remove so many freedoms in, oh, in, no. in six months it's, it's unprecedented surely i call them the ayatollahs of sage that they are the ayatollahs of sage they they probably you know they're looking into their their mystical ball and making their predictions that uh, the god of the nhs will be angry 
if we don't, we don't, and that, that's your other problem, of course, is the deification of the NHS. That's why essentially the public are going along with it. Again, very clever politically. Um, uh, and you can do whatever, you can do anything you want to save the NHS over here. Literally anything you want because it is so revered. So it makes sense to close down private enterprise to save the socialist institution of the NHS. Yes, the, so certainly if one were going to write a book about, about the, the different currents that, that created this situation, you start to see it was actually inevitable, even though we're surprised by how extreme it is, that mm. I noticed this during the, during the Brexit campaign, the way that it was all about, yeah, we're going to get 350 million back and we're going to spend it on our NHS. And you knew it was lost when... Yeah when people when politicians started using the, the phrase our nhs unironically and and continually and you thought hang on a second you are setting us up for a massive fall because this 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 greedy creature is just going to get bloated and fat and it's going to be untouchable and that's what's happened yeah i mean it's it's like saying you know don't go out at night in case you get mugged please protect the police we don't yes. have to protect our police or, or protect, don't light a fire in your house because the fire brigade might get calls. Protect the fire brigade. Yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, it's just, it's madness. Everything yes. has to be sacrificed for this institution. And, and I mean, let's face it, if they kept the closed pubs forever, you would, you would save a lot of money. I mean, how much alcohol, I mean, how much problems does alcohol abuse cause? A lot, right? Well, you, you'll save the fire the service and the police and the NHS if you keep the pubs closed forever. That's true. There's no yeah. doubt about that. It definitely is the pesky patients that, that keep the NHS, you know, having to spend money and stuff. If, if there were no patients, it would be absolutely fine. Do, tell me, have you got any theories on why, any thoughts on Michael Gove? I mean, your, your, your co-editor, Cathy Gingell, oh, yes. wrote the most excoriating letter to Gove laying out just yeah. just how bad what he's doing is do you have any theories on on I mean, i'm a friend and i do not understand why he's doing this have you got any theories do Again, you think I just, I just think, well a they're either true believers right and they, they think it's they 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 really think that this is a big threat and 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 what they're doing is proportionate you know and you know which they, uh, they it certainly isn't um but again i just again you know human nature start no, um, he's been incredibly invested. You know, he's, he's totally in the heart of government. He would lose a lot. It's not about money, it, but it is about status. You, they want to be on the inside. And, uh, you know, he, I mean, ultimately, I think it's Dominic Cummings who's making all the calls. Yeah. So maybe Michael got calculated. Um, it's just not worth it for me to leave. Even if I leave, it won't make any difference. And uh, again, if you wanted to be... Um, sort of kind to them, you'd say, well, he figures he could make, maybe he can do more in there, right? He can definitely make sure oh, yeah. it's lifted on the, on the 2nd of December or whatever. That's if, if you want to think well of him, you know, he's, that's what he's saying to himself. He can't leave my, Matt Hancock and Dominic Cummings in there just to wreck the whole country. Jacob Rees-Mogg might be making the same calculation. Yeah. Um, that's on a good day. The rest of it will just that's... be because they the status, but, but, right? But Laura... We're not like that. I mean, the, 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 there's a few of us, and we know who they are, and everyone knows who they are, who've been fighting this from from the beginning. What? Why haven't we been taken in? What? What is it about us that makes us? Are we just just bullshit idiots, or what? Uh, I I don't. I just don't know because it, to me, it's just so obviously wrong. Yeah. It's so, and again, it's so obviously disproportionate. So I always said at the beginning, look, if you want to close down the, the big, the, the big super spreader events or whatever it might be, you can certainly tweak things, maybe have the 10 p.m. curfew, you know, I'm not big on it, but you can do those things. But to be so petty, you know, to close down all human contacts, essentially, um, this there is something more to this this is as i said radical fundamental revolutionary change that shouldn't be supported by any right-minded person um even if you personally will be okay uh it's it's just it's not right you know the, the suicide rate on this is it's terrible you know and what they're doing to the university students 
is outrageous. They have been locked up, I'm told, by basically private security firms. They essentially have no teaching. They, they were given fake grades for exams they never sat at yeah. A-levels. Now yeah. they're going to be given fake degrees for degrees they'll never have read. The whole thing is such a, you know, it's such a mirage. You really have to go down to the fair. You do have to go back, go back over your old Brothers Grimm stories, your fairy tale stories, because these are timeless themes in a way. This is, this is a lie. Um, again, I, oh, in terms of why haven't we been taken in, I don't know where you stand on the whole Vietnam War thing. I, I am pretty anti it. But, you know, I, I read at the beginning, the beginning, oh, the, the protests in the beginning for that Vietnam War were tiny. There were like 10 people. So I'm hoping, and of course, by the end of it, they have to pull it. And the reason why, again, the Vietnam War, again, you could change in print, you could support in principle, right? Communism is bad, and the Americans sure. were right to try and, and say, sure. but it could, never be, it could never be successful in practice, and the cost was too high. And, and, and again, if you watch the long documentary in Ken Burns, General McNamara was, was running that war on data. He ran that war on, they had stacks of papers in the Oval yeah. Office, so it's exactly the same thing as if, and they were running through the numbers, and it was literally, you know, the body count. They're like, but we are killing more of them than ours. Yeah. How, why can't we win? Why can't we win? Well, because you're on their ground. That's why you can't win. Yeah. That's yeah. why you can't win. So yes. I just think there are big similarities. If you read Niall Ferguson's history book on the pity of war, you know, he goes through the whole First World War, and he's like, this wasn't a tragedy. This was a mistake. This never needed to happen. And again, people become really invested, right? So it's, it's too hard for them to turn the tanker now, mm. right? It's too hard for them to come up and say, you know what, I'm really sorry, we were wrong. Yes. So, you know, it's, it's, you have to go with human instinct. Oh, well, well, I'm out of, so I was watching the, secret, the old version of The Secret Garden with the kids last night, it's on Netflix. And yeah. again, it was, it was like I've been sent by God to watch this because the young lad, what's his name? Colin is really sick. Right, right. He's under the illusion he's, re you know, the secret garden. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd, I'd yeah. like to see. I'd no, like he's to see it. Yeah. Watch it on Netflix. He's, he's, he's in his bed, and it's all dark because the spores might get them. And not a word of a lie. They all have to wear masks. They're all wearing Do masks. They? Well, where was this made? This, this, Judy, this Judy, Judy Dench, the, the whatever, uh, the, you know, the head girl, the, the housekeeper, they're all wearing, they're, they have to wear masks, otherwise Colin will die. And then, of course, the, we meet Mary. Mary comes in, takes down all the things, shouts at them, tells them there's nothing wrong with them. Mary, by the way, that's not a coincidence in my head. Um, get, gets him out of bed. He's like, what about the spores? You know, she's like, there's no spores. They take him outside and they're all, they're all lined up with masks, right? All the, all the help, all the servants. Yeah. And then at the end, Judy Dench turns around and goes, oh, just take off these ridiculous masks. I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. We should, I, yeah. You got, how yeah. Fantastic. And I, I say to the kids, I'm like, those masks are about as useful to Colin as the masks outside are. Actually, what, you know, Laura, one of the, one of the, yeah. one of the things that, one of the very few things that's made me happy about this, this whole craziness, I think it's radicalized my kids. They've, they've become much yeah, I'm more. I'm hoping my kids are with them, but much I, more I like genuinely me. don't put, yeah, I don't push my politics on them. I really don't. It, my son is begging me to actually let him read my, my mask, Facebook, because I, I actually try and keep them away from the news, right? Because they absorb it. That it causes, I don't like it. So. Uh, I can control what happens in my house. I can't control what goes on elsewhere. But yeah, I mean, I don't think they they know my position. So um, I think I think what what this year's year has yeah. done. I, I, and I, I I sometimes think that one of the processes of getting getting older is unlearning all the propaganda that you've been fed through the culture yeah. and through the education system. And 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 realizing, well, getting closer to seeing the world as it actually is, rather than as as as, it, as the narrative you've been fed. And I yeah. was just just a couple of examples. I was watching. Um, uh, have you seen Barbarians? Barbarians no. is, is is about the battle of the Teutoburg Forest, where the the biggest, just about the biggest defeat ever suffered by the Romans when the German barbarians in I think the sixth yeah. century defeated i think yeah. two legions um something like that anyway 
Um, when I, heard, I first heard about this story years ago, I, my sympathies were all with the Romans. I thought, my God, how awful it must be to be a Roman legionary in this kind of dark, barbaric place in the, in the forest. Um, you know, yeah. forests are scary places. You know, you think about Grimm's fairy tales and stuff and, and, and imagine these hairy barbarians chopping you to pieces and probably ripping your balls yeah. off and eating them. Um, well, watching the series now, I'm That's thinking... Sorry? That's what? what the government are doing now. Yeah, well, That's what the government yes, are doing now. I'm, I'm a barbarian and I always have been a barbarian. Um, <laughs> it, and uh, the, the, other, the other thing I've realised is that we've, it, it isn't the kind of the Western intellectual tradition to see, I mean, it's actually, an, actually a sort of liberal progressive view, the idea that, that history has been a, 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 a period of, 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 of progress towards, towards the kind of uh, what Francis Fukuyama called the end of history, you know, where, where yeah. everything is just, we, we've got all our institutions sorted, yeah. we've, got, we've got the UN yeah, yeah. to look after peace, and we've got NATO, and we've got, it's all okay, don't worry about it little man, you know, it's all, we've got your back. Yeah. And I realise now, I mean, you know, this has been no, happening it's a few never It's not. It's just these. No. We are. We are in right now. We are experiencing the same group hysteria that saw those girls being um, hanged as or burned as witches in Salem. We, we, well, no, not a, not not just us. In terms of the witches, I read that a lot of the girls actually confessed. In terms of why are people going along with it, they actually said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. Um, uh, I got on my broom last night and went whizzing around the neighbourhood. Yeah, that's how deep. That's how deep the the hysteria was. Yeah. It wasn't like a forced confession. They actually kind of believed it. Yeah. You know, people believe the NHS will just close down tomorrow, even though it's a massive institution that can never close. Can never close. Yeah. You know. Or, or, so you think about you, you mentioned the the First World War. I mean, the appetite yeah. among the young men of Europe, and of course, yeah. and of course, yeah. the, the the parents as well. You know, sort of, mm. sort of giving them white feathers if they didn't, if they yeah, didn't. Yeah, yeah. It was it, well. That's the shaming, right? That's the shaming. That's the same here. If you don't have your NHS flag, you're you're you haven't done your bit. You haven't yeah. gone off and got yourself blown up in the in in, in the song. So they shame soldiers, women shame soldiers, obviously, in going to the front. And um, yeah, a lot of, uh, I mean, I think it was maybe a quarter of a million people signed up way before conscription. Way, oh, way, way before. I'm sure I would have done had you I know. been around in 1914. There was, there was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. The, the, there is that, there is the, uh, if you go to the Imperial War Museum, there's a great quote from some classical writer in, in, inscribed on the wall, explaining how, you know, the, the men who'd never experienced war before were, were hungry for the experience. I think it's a natural. Well, it was, yeah. Well, uh, that's even more justified. It's just going out and sort of, that's all, that would have almost been seen as an adventure, right? And proving yourself as a man is somehow justified. Staying at home on your couch and watching Netflix, there's no justification for that. That's just, you, they're just doing that to kill your soul. Yeah, but Laura, this right? is, uh, this is our, our version of, 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 the, of the First World War. You think about, you think about the, the cultural currents that led to the First World War. You've got, okay, people would have, yeah. may have read the novels of G.A. Henty, um, they'd have read um, Vitae Lampada, you know, the sound of the desert is sodden red, red with the wreck of a square that broke, uh, you know, all, of, all, the, all this play up, play up and play the game. The idea that you had a duty to go out and fight for your empire, whatever. So that was yeah. then. Now we've got 50 years of cultural softening where we've been taught yeah. that altruism is the most important thing and, and men must rein in their masculinity and become more feminine yeah. so in a way this is the kind of the anti-war but it's as bad as in, in its way as the as the war yeah if you've got asthma stay at home and be terrified even though you're you're a 20 year old bloke who, you know but not just I see, well, I, I, when i see the when i see the young men wearing masks as well i just it all makes me almost as angry as when I see the women with the young babies wearing masks. It's just like, what's wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Like, I this, totally it's agree. I agree. Now listen, this, is, just, this, this is good. This is, this is a moment of a cultural defiance. My wife has brought me a cup of oh, coffee. Yeah. And like, like, like wives used to do back in the day. And it's great. And I yeah, just like well, to... I well, there are, there, there are, we, we could go on and I'll tell you, we'll, we'll end with what 
some good points from what you know what we could we could make this bearable but i i want to put in one film reference because i watched it in the last lockdown and you'd be surprised so the new remake of robocop right it's worth watching the first half an hour of that because oh, yeah. it has an evil tv network dude i think it's samuel jackson is it yeah. and then it has like another congressman so they want to introduce robocops and i think it's the republicans who are like no because we need a human to make the final decision to take someone's life, okay? Yeah. That's what we need to do. And the polls agree, no Robocops. And one of the politicians, honest to God, no, they are the, maybe the guys who make the Robocops say, let's change the public's mind. That's all we have to do. Make, show a polling that's different, yeah. right? So what they do, uh, and so you have your, your, have your um, Pierce Morgan, sorry, I mean Samuel L. Jackson, on the TV every night saying how we must have Robocops because, and this is not a word of a lie, it'll be much safer for Americans and what's more important than the safety of Americans. And I just thought, well, wow, like safetyism, even then, it wasn't like, no, the, the value of, as I said, a human making the ultimate decision to take a life is what's important. No, safety. Is what's important and they, they 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 concoct this thing and they manipulate the, the public mood and the polls and of course eventually they they get their their robocop or something but the first half an hour is definitely is a good watch i'm just like it's it's just everywhere you know it this is this is what people do I, that is that is extraordinary precedent isn't it? it it just shows that we've there are intelligent people who've been aware of this stuff and who who, who see what's happening now can i give you uh if you're a Netflix person, do you, do you ever watch series on Netflix? Mm, the husband no, does. No, um, listen. Yeah. On, what do you want? I totally recommend To The Lake. To The Lake is the TV Ooh. event of this Never year. Okay, Russian okay. made, Russian made, get this, made last year, <laughs> about this deadly yeah. flu outbreak and the effects it has on, on Russia. But the, the, the flu itself is just the MacGuffin. It, it, it's basically about, about the, it's, it's what, um, it's a bit like the Day of the Triffids. It's called a sort of benign apocalypse, um, something like that. A, a cozy apocalypse, I think Brian Alders called it. Yeah. And, and so it's about a group of family and friends fleeing to this remote lake where presumably they're going to find safety. But there's a particular episode, episode five, where the state responds with the kind of a thuggery not dissimilar to what we're experiencing now only a kind of russian style thuggery so we've got yeah. we've got troops in in kind of full nbc kit rounding up villagers yeah. and actually yeah. sh actually shooting them and there's there's a fantastic scene where this bunch of of stock russian peasants they're all alcoholics they all look kind of really rattled uh, are talking about this and whether the government's measures are proportionate and one of them says well yeah. you know it seems to make sense to me you know if you sort of shoot people who are infected because after all then they could they could they could spread the the, the virus anyway in the course of the episode that the the peasants come to realize that actually no what's going on is really wrong we've got to resist this stuff it's yeah. It ought to be, I, I tell you what, if I were a teacher, I would make this, this series compulsory viewing. It's quite gory, but my God, it does tell you a lot about what's going on now. Anyway. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, it is often a minority that starts to, that starts to resistance. It's never, you know, but on, I mean, the mainstream media is obviously a problem. It's a big, big problem. My my, sure. my 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 professional lighting has started to the battery is getting a strain yeah. effect. So I'm I'm inducing epileptic fix in anyone anyone prone to that. Uh, I'd like to say thank you very much, Laura Laura Perrins of of Conservative Woman. And my God, Laura, it's good to have you on the show, and good to have a, a, somebody as combative combative as myself fighting the fight. So well done for that. Um, please, uh, can I remind uh, those of you who who, who like this stuff that. Please support me on, on Patreon or subscribe star. It really does help. And my God, we're living in a world where increasingly the bad guys are winning. If you want to want to help fight the fight, yeah, just support me on Patreon or subscribe star. And thank you, Laura, once again for, for being a brilliant guest. Come back soon. No problem. Bye, James. Bye.